In today's lesson, we are going to talk about the various ways we can duplicate an object and make some neat effects. We're going to learn about radial symmetry, how to uh, make it in Tinkercad. We're going to learn about sym linear symmetry, what it is, uh, and one way to make it in Tinkercad. We're going to be using the duplicate tool a lot today. The duplicate tool is kind of this funky little tool uh, that is super incredibly powerful. We're going to use the align tool all the time, like always. And we're going to use the mirror tool as well. Let's first talk about uh, linear versus radial symmetry. Linear symmetry is something that can be chopped in half, folded, and then it makes a copy of itself. So a butterfly has linear symmetry down the center of its body. One wing folded over the other wing would give you linear symmetry. Radial symmetry, however, is a little more complicated and it is a shape repeated in a circle. Uh, so you might have a fragment of it, let's say from this flake to this flake, that is repeated six times. Uh, radial symmetry also shows up in nature in things like starfish. Starfish have radial symmetry. It could be one of these little limbs repeated five times around in a circle. Um, radial symmetry comes up a lot in design. Uh, if you if you got a really, really cool car, you might have really cool rims, and you will notice that it is one shape repeated a bunch of times. Uh, these also pop up in toys. This has radial symmetry, and it would be this orb here repeated three times. Let's talk about how to design this. Uh, I'm just going to make a little uh, cool design that I'm going to start off with linear symmetry. Remember, linear symmetry is like the butterfly. You got one side, flip it over, you got the other side. I can pull out some shapes. Uh, I'm going to just whip this out really quick. Uh, precision is not the goal here. The goal is to make something neat-ish. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to zoom in now, and I'm going to use my line tool. I'm, I want to repeat this pattern down here a whole bunch of times. Uh, and to help me out with that, I'm going to use my line tool. I'm going to line them up perfectly on the edge. That lets me know that this is perfectly on that edge. I'm going to select the shape I want and then control D. I hold control down and then I tap D once. And this helps if you're zoomed in a little bit more, but you're going to drag it down to the next spot you want. I moved it 10. Now when you hit control D again, it should repeat the action you just did. Sometimes this can be a little finicky and it can take a few tries. Don't get discouraged if you're having a hard time. Uh, that's kind of cool. I've got these all perfectly spaced the exact same amount that I moved the first one. Uh, I'm going to kind of one-up it a little bit uh, and change these all so they're a little bit of a different size. Um, and I'm going to get rid of those. Now, I want these kind of lined up, like sort of like a tree shape. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to go to my line tool. My line tool is my favorite tool in the world. Because yes, I could try and line these one by one, but instead, I click this middle bo button, and there we have it. If I group these together, I now have an opportunity. Uh, I'm going to uh, copy and paste. I'm going to move this over here a little bit to show you the mirror tool. So what if I want this to be like a butterfly wing, where down the middle line of symmetry, they get, go from small to big? Well, that's what this tool up here is, the mirror tool. If you click that, when you have an object selected, it, it'll show you what your, your symmetry will look like before you click it, just like the align tool. Check that out. I'm going to have these overlap just a little bit to make sure, and then I'm going to group them together. All right, so now I have something with linear symmetry. This side and this side are mirror images of each other. This is where it gets really cool because I want to turn this into kind of like a snowflake where it's got uh, six repeats. I'm going to select this 
and now I'm going to hit Control D. Remember, that's the same thing I used to repeat it in a line down the line. When I Control D this time, I'm going to click the rotate arrow. I'm going to rotate it. Now when I rotate it, I can hit Control D again, and it looks like it didn't work for me that time. That's okay. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to try one more time. Uh, Control D, going to rotate 45 degrees. Control D again. Control D again. There we go. I now have radial symmetry. That's pretty cool. Uh, I could uh, delete some of these and do a different number instead of 45. We can see what that looks like. Um, we could do like this amount. Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. And I got lucky there actually. These all kind of, it, that looks like it, something that's supposed to happen. Um, we have to be a little bit careful uh, with the angles we choose. Remember that there are 365 degrees in a circle. You can see this number changing. If you want it to look nice, that the number of times you repeat it should divide evenly into 360. Hold with me here. You can do this. If I want to make something with six repeats, 360 oh, divided by six is 36 degrees. So I come back over to here. Control D, and I'm going to, oh, uh, I lost it. All right, I'm going to very carefully turn this one so it's 36 degrees. Now when I repeat it, they all go into each other evenly, and there's a nice space around them. If you want to do it 8, you're going to divide 360 by 8 uh, and turn it that amount. Um, even numbers are going to be your friend here. But this is something so, too, super cool. Try, mess around with it. Um, this is a lot of fun.